Let's go ahead and just worship Him. Let's just say something wonderful to the Lord. Crown Him. Crown Him with your praises. Lord, we worship your holy name. We honor your majesty. We bless your holy name. Dear Lord, we bring praise. We bring thanks. Just as we are, we come as candidates of your grace and mercy. The Bible says to come boldly to the throne of grace. We come, Lord, ever so much in need of your mercy today to find grace and mercy in times of need. We worship you, Jesus. On this 25th day of this new year, we want to say we are grateful for being with us every step of the way. What a wonderful God you are. Worthy. You are worthy. King of kings, Lord of love. You are worthy, worthy, that's who you are. You are worthy, oh, King of kings, oh, Lord of lords, I worship you. You are worthy, worthy, that's who you are. Precious Jesus, King of kings, yeah. Lord of lords, oh Lord, you are worthy, you are worthy, worthy, yes Lord Jesus, you are worthy, hallelujah, King of kings, Lord, Lord of lords, I worship you. Heavenly Father, we just want to worship you once again and welcome you in this very minute into our hearts and our lives and our church to do what you alone can do. We are open, O oh God, to learn from you. We push aside every pride, every ego, every stubbornness, every hardness of heart and of ears. We come as little children knowing nothing but ready to receive everything from you ready to trust your every word for the betterment of our lives and our future to help us walk in steps and in places where we have never walked before to follow the ancient paths which thou alone know it teach every one of us and may we all leave this place better than we came May we leave this place more confident than we came. May we leave this place more equipped than we came. We pray for all offline and online viewers. May they partake of the grace in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise Jehovah. Hallelujah. Can you greet someone by your side with a smile and a wonderful hug as you take your seat gloriously? Amen. Please have your seat, have your seat, amen. Say something nice to the person, amen. Give a nice compliment, praise God. Hallelujah. Praise Jehovah. Amen. Hallelujah. Can you hear me? Hallelujah. We have our sister from Livy once again worshiping with us. We're happy to have you. You're welcome. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen and amen. Our God is good. And all the time. Praise Jehovah.
Just see how you come bless you. Amen, amen. On you, how you come bless you. Amen. Wow, can we open our Bibles quickly to the book of Acts? Acts. Special appreciation and um, gratitude to every one of you present today. Against all odds, making it to church. Amen. Hallelujah. Beating the snow. Amen. And making it to church. The Lord bless you. Such things don't go unnoticed. And they don't go unrewarded. Hallelujah. Amen. Appreciation to our pastors. We want to celebrate and appreciate them. The Lord bless you. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. Hallelujah. Amen. Acts, the first chapter, the eighth verse. As, as usual, on our Friday teachings, we, we've been doing um, some pep talks, I'll call them. Amen. Some little tete a tete. Amen. Um, about evangelism, introductions to evangelism. Praise the Lord. And um, last week, if you remember very well, um, I taught on a message titled The Spirit of Evangelism. Amen. Where we began looking into the place of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. And this um, wonderful call to win souls. The week before that, we looked at the importance and the relevance of wisdom. The Bible says, He that winneth his soul. Is wise. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. He that winneth his soul is wise. Today we want to go even a different direction. Um, well, not different, a continuation actually of last week's teaching from where we left off. Today I want to teach on what I title Exercising Your Spirit. Amen. Exercising Your Spirit and Evangelism. Amen. Praise the Lord. Exercising your spirit and evangelism. Or put better, exercising your spirit for evangelism. Yeah, that's a better word. Exercising your spirit for evangelism. Amen. Any, any serious craftsman, any professional knows the importance and the relevance of prepping himself or herself for the main task of the day. If Barcelona has a football, a football game tonight by say 10 p.m., um, they would already have done several rehearsals prior to that day. And several minutes before the match, you'd see them on the field doing some prepping. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> if a good chorister has a ministration to do, they would have some rehearsals and some prepping. And even if it's a Sunday morning, you want to wake up early to set your voice right, to do one or two vocal trainings. This is something you do every day so that your flow, your final flow will be beautiful. Amen. Amen. You don't want to be coughing and um, doing some things on stage like you just woke up. Amen. Amen. Um, you want to be set for the task. A good drummer and a good uh, instrumentalist, keyboardist or um, bassist would um, always want to be there on time to check things, to be sure things are in place want to test how the things sound. You don't want to know in the final minutes that something is missing. And you want to be familiar with the sounds. You don't want to be playing the snare and it sounds like um, something, something else, like the tom. Amen, he says, praise the Lord. You want, to, you, want, uh, you want everything to sound just right. Anybody want everything to sound just right? Praise the Lord. And so 1 Timothy 4 verse 8 um, begins to tell us that similarly in the kingdom of God, there are a few things that we must put in place. First Timothy 4 verse 8, First Timothy 4 verse 8, we'll come back to Acts. Praise the Lord. 
a good student um, a long time before uh, the exam normally should do some prepping. Tell anybody some prepping. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. A good student. Amen. You do some prepping. You want to familiarize yourself with the topic. Amen. You don't want to find out in class what you have. Amen. It's not so fun. Praise the Lord. You could do that you know, once in a while, but it's not so fun. Uh, a good student should already know. You don't want to be taken by surprise. You know, not the one when um, three minutes you just enter the class at 8.05. And because teacher delays, you're finding out, uh, please, what's the topic? You know, like by 8.05 or which subject? You don't even know the course you're studying. Amen. Hallelujah. A good student wants to be always prepared. So in First Timothy 4, uh, verse 8, the Bible says, For bodily exercise profited little. The same way an Olympian or someone who is going to partake in an Olympic game have to exercise himself. The Bible says that body exercise, it says it has some profit, but it says it is little. It says, but godliness is profitable unto all things. Say about godliness. Godliness. By that it means spiritual exercise. There is such a thing as a spiritual exercise. The same way we have physical, human exercise or bodily exercise. There is spiritual exercise. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. It says, but godliness is profitable unto all things. Having promise of the life that now is and of that which is to come. So the importance and the relevance of spiritual exercise goes beyond just the physical, the present physical, or how I may feel. It does affect it because it says it has profit of the life that now is and of that which is to come. Praise the Lord. So spiritual exercise does wonders. And so I'm going to be introducing, you to you, introducing to you today how this spiritual exercise, as the Bible makes mention of in this verse, how it can affect evangelism. Amen. You don't just want, you don't just want to suddenly meet the woman at the well and be unprepared. Amen. Jesus handled that situation perfectly because he was prepared. Jesus always stayed prepared. It is so crucial that a Christian learns to always do his or her daily exercise. Tell me about daily exercise. And not just the physical one of going to Alliance. Amen. Or some gymmy center. But there is a spiritual one that also we must learn to do. Am I might don't know somebody. That puts you ever prepared and ready to deal with spiritual issues. Amen. Amen. So in Acts 1 verse 8, in Acts 1 verse 8, the Bible says, Jesus was speaking to his disciples. He's telling them, I know you have been with me for three years and a half, but you're still not prepped enough. You're still not ready enough. Praise the Lord. You are still not prepped enough. You are still not ready enough. There is something that you need. Act 1 verse 8 please. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. He said you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is what? Then shall you become witnesses. The reason sometimes we are unable to actually witness enough is the person of the spirit. Jesus is saying that there is this thing, just that you've been in my meetings, just that you've been my disciple, just that you have seen me do it, does not necessarily mean you're going to be able to do it. He said there is something you are in great need of. The person of the Holy Spirit. Tell anybody the person of the Holy Spirit. So last week, I took time to introduce you to the place and importance of this person, the Holy Spirit. But I want to show you how he actually does the work. Because the Holy Spirit is a partner. Tell me about it. a partner. So the word koinonia, which in the prayer, it says that the communication or that the koinonia of the Spirit will be with you. We are to partner with the Spirit. The same way the Holy Spirit partnered with Jesus to have a successful ministry. Every child of God must learn to partner with the Spirit. 
Just having him is not enough. And this is where the exercise comes in now. Because if, 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 if I'm going to lose weight like I want to, just registering at Alliance Arena, for example, or Sports Center, does not mean I'm going to lose weight. I got to know how to partner with them. I got to know how to attend meetings. I got to know how to follow my trainer. And the Holy Spirit is that helper. He's that trainer. He's that teacher. And so Jesus Christ had told them something. He is saying the secret for successful evangelism is the person of the Holy Spirit. Any type of evangelism. Hallelujah. But how does it work? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Acts 2 verse 4. Acts 2 verse 4. Acts 2 verse 4. Acts 2 verse 4. Amen. The Bible says, true to it as Jesus had promised them, they were all gathered together in one place. And when the day of Pentecost had fully come, it says they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and they began to speak with other tongues. Tell them about speak with other tongues. The first manifestation, when you get full, I mean really full, is there's got to be an overflow. There's got to be what? Speaking in tongues is not an ideology. It's not a, subject, subject, it's not a suggestion. It is not a minor part of Christianity. No, it's a core part of the New Testament church. Tell anybody, it's a core part of the New Testament church. They were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. There was something in them. You see, you see, you see, you see. What one of the, th in fact, in any wise country, any wise country, in the United States of America, when you win the visa lottery, huh? when you want to be granted citizenship, before you get granted, the first and very important test they will find from you is, can you speak the language? When you win a visa lot, even if you are from, you are French speaking. America is not a French speaking nation. The first thing is, they expect you to learn the language. To understandable and at least average speaking levels. That's why some institutions will not admit you until you can, you can prove that you speak English. That's why they put tests like IELTS and TOEFL. You have, to, you have to prove that you understand the language and that you speak it and that you have spoken it for a season or a period of time or at least that you are certified that you understand what you're doing. I'm talking about language now. Even here in Ukraine, under normal circumstances, before you are given a citizenship, you should be able to communicate in their language. It's like that everywhere in the world. Tell me about languages are important. They were all filled with the spirit. And the proof of the feeling was what they said. I'm not going to someone. It was not just a touch of the spirit. A lot of us have known touches of the spirit. But to be full, full, where out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth begins to speak. Where the, the heart gets full enough that something comes out, it requires feeling. I dealt with that last week, but my focus this time is not on the feeling. My focus is on the relevance of the partnership in speaking in tongues. Hallelujah. Amen. And how it affects ev evangelism. And the Bible says, and, and they began to speak with other tongues as, they, as the Spirit gave them utterance. And the thing that resulted from this, we looked at last week, go to um, Acts 4 this time. The thing that resulted in this particular verse was that it brought a lot of people to them. And the Bible said, Peter, who was once cowardice, the Bible said, we've not received the spirit of fear or of cowardice, but a spirit of love, of power, and of a sound mind. Am I talking to somebody? The reason why you are afraid of taking steps, huh? the reason why you are afraid of people, people's faces, the reason why you are scared is most probably because you have not known what it, what it means to be full of this spirit. When you are full of the Holy Spirit, and I mean really full, there is suddenly a quietening. 
There is a silence of every fear. Because that spirit is the spirit of lordship. Tell your neighbor, spirit of lordship. You suddenly are not afraid. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are not arrogant, but you are not afraid. Amen. You are not afraid of your dean. You are not afraid of your professor. You are not afraid. In the middle of the night, light is switched off. You are not afraid. I mean, look at somebody. In fact, you start questioning every of your previous fears. Act 4, go to 31. 31. I spent the whole of my last teaching on Act 4, Act 4, so I wouldn't spend too much time today. This was where we left off last time. The Bible says after they were threatened, Peter and John, they were threatened after they did that miracle. They said, don't preach and don't make mention of his name anywhere again. They went back to their company in the 23rd verse. They prayed together here. And when they had prayed, the place was shaking where they were assembled together. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. Tell anybody, they were all filled. That's where the secret is. Don't miss it. Amen. Any person in the singing ministry knows that when a song is lifted that you don't know, you start shaking. Your mouth is moving, but nothing is coming out. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. You just chew your lips and hope that the person next to you knows the song. Amen. 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 You pray and hope that the lyrics will just appear on the screen immediately. And it's at that moment that those in the lyrics department, for some strange reason, don't remember that they need to put up lyrics. And you know that day, the Lord has meant you. Amen. Not the devil. <laughs> Hallelujah. But when you know a song, you don't even care about the lyrics. You just keep going. You just keep going. In fact, you even close your eyes and sing it. Confidence. But the question is, how did I reach a point or how did, did such a one reach a point where the lyrics is now coming out? You put it in there. I don't know somebody. You took time to learn the lyrics. You took time to read it. You took, took time to sing it again and again. And sometimes you forget, you go back. You look at it, you put it back in. You look at it, you put it back in until it becomes automated. When you open your mouth, even if you don't know, you are not sure of the next five lines. You just know, as I keep going, each one will be coming. I might not know somebody. As I keep going, each one will be coming. I want to show you how tongues and praying in the spirit works. How exercising your spirit works. And even more so how it affects evangelism. When they had prayed, the place was shaking where they were assembled together. And they were all filled. They were all what? The tongues you see coming out is the result of the feeling that was put in. Am I talking to someone? When you get full, and that's why I said last week, you got to be consistent. And I went deep and telling you my own story, Smith Wigglesworth and many other men of God who have had similar situations. Seeking the Lord, seeking the Spirit. You know, the Bible says when the clouds be full, it empties. So the task is for me to get myself full. And as I get myself filled with the Spirit, a day is going to come, I'm going to speak the word of God with boldness. Tell your neighbor, speak the word with boldness. You no longer say it like you're not sure. You don't chew your mouth. Um, I mean, okay, I just want to say what I think. You know, me, me, I'm not sure. I'm not sure whether this one is in the Bible. I'm, 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 no, you just say it. You speak it with boldness. Tell anybody speak it with boldness. Speak it with boldness. They speak the word with boldness. 
and the kingdom increase. Go to 32, let's see if, if, what is said there. And the multitude of them that were of one heart and of one soul, neither said any of them that out of the things which he possessed was his own, but he had all things in common. What, what, what happened, what the consequent result was that the ministry expanded. They were afraid. They were scared. They hid themselves. But immediately they prayed and prayed in the Holy Ghost and God filled with the Spirit and spoke out with tongues. Suddenly they had strange victories. Go to the book of Luke. Let me show you the principle there. Luke, Luke, Luke. Hallelujah. Luke 21 verse 15. There was a promise which Jesus gave before he left. He says, I will give you a mouth. Tell anybody a mouth. T today, you know, let, let me say this because the things I'm about to go into, I've not even started going deep yet. Let me say this. They will not make sense to the carnal mind. They will not make sense to what? You will question it. You will ask yourself. You will say, you will do this, you will do that. In fact, you realize that according to the word of God, every person who gave his life to Christ, this mouth now, you see this mouth that this young man has right now? God says, Jesus says, I will give you a new mouth. Now, you will think the mouth he had, which he was using to chew, uh, what's, what's his name now? Beef. Before he gave his life to Christ and this mouth, that they are the same. To the carnal physical mind, it looks the same. But Jesus is saying by himself, I will give you a mouth. A new mouth. I'll give you a wisdom which all your adversaries shall not be able to gain, say, nor resist. So what's going to happen is the same person speaking before who was afraid and timid and scared. Someone like Be uh, Benny Hinn, who used to stutter. Benny Hinn could hardly make a sentence. And I can tell you many, many men who, who before they met God, look at Moses. Moses was a stammerer also. But something happens when the spirit of the Lord meets you. When you get full and you reach a place of surrendering. Where you begin to accept him and question what you already know. And push out that carnal thinking. And push out that carnal nature. And you begin to accept his truth. When he says I'll give you a mouth and wisdom. The wisdom you had before and the wisdom you have when you get filled with the Holy Ghost are not the same. I'm not going to somebody. Jesus is speaking. Himself. I'm going to give you wisdom. Tell anybody, he, he's given me wisdom. See I ain't foolish. He means I'm smart. I'm sharp. So I'll give you wisdom which all your adversaries. You know, this is why we are not scared of our enemies. Hallelujah. We are not scared of our enemies. We are not trying. I have to say this again. And if you know me you know, long enough, you know that I'm very much along those lines. I personally believe my enemies are not a factor. Amen. I'm not one of those who believe in hiding. I'm not one of those who is scared of my enemies. And don't tell anybody. Hey, if, they, if, you tell, if you say it out, it's finished. Your enemy, if they hear. They heard of Jesus. They couldn't stop him. He announced it. He was coming. They couldn't stop him. Am I talking to somebody? Tell anybody, I can't be stopped. Say, I can't be stopped. Say, I'm coming as a trailblazer. If you stand on my way, I'll bulldoze you. Amen. That's what God is saying. He said, I'm going to give you a mouth and a wisdom. Tell anybody wisdom. wisdom. My enemies are no wiser than me. Tell them, tell them, say, say, that about, say that about yourself. Say, my enemies, my enemies. they are no wiser than me. Wiser than me. Hallelujah. Amen. Say, I'm ten times wiser. Than all my enemies put together. The Bible said the Hebrew boys when they fasted and they prayed. It said they became ten times wiser than all their mates. Can you tap your neighbor and say I'm, I'm, I'm many years ahead of my generation. Of my generation. Say I don't think like my peers. I like say I don't know about you. I but I don't think like others. Like say I'm many steps ahead. Many steps. Amen. Say I don't know the year you are in. But I'm not in 2019. 
Amen. Amen. Am I talking to somebody? Yes, Your ability to see far and make decisions. Why others are still, you know, um, rejoicing about 2019, you have already planned 2030. Why are they still shouting, um, if Jesus tarries? Uh, man plans, God pro Tell them, Jesus is my friend. Hmm? If there's any change in plan, you will let me know. Am I talking to somebody? Yes. So I'll give you a new kind of wisdom. Which all your adversaries, even the devil. And I don't know about people who are scared of the devil. Some people are so afraid of the devil. The devil is a boy. Tell anybody, the devil is a boy. The devil is a boy. Says a small boy. Says a small boy. Amen. Amen. He says they shall not be able to gain say nor resist. Hallelujah. Amen. Tap your neighbor. Say, if I mean something, I mean something. I'm going to get it. Including from, you. including from you. Amen. Amen. Yeah. God is saying, I'm giving you a supersonic mouth. The mouth that knows how to get what it wants. Sharp mouth. It says none of your adversaries shall be able to gain it. In other words, they cannot outsmart it. When you open your mouth, they will be confounded. You always have answers for their many questions. Glory. Tell anybody I'm endowed. I'm endowed. Say I'm blessed. I'm blessed. Say I'm loaded. I'm loaded. Say my mouth, my mouth. Carries, life. carries life. Yeah. This is why we need the exercise. A very skilled chorister who does not exercise her voice can sing and you shout, what is this? And yet the person is blessed and talented. The same way you can have a mouth and wisdom that can confound your enemies and you may be losing fights because you don't exercise. Tell anybody, you need to exercise. You need to exercise your spirit, your mouth, and your wisdom. Hallelujah. I'll give you a mouth. Amen. How many have received your mouth already? Amen. Praise the Lord. Now, now think about this. I don't know about you and how you read the scriptures, but let me speak to you a little. It is things like this that affect my psychology and my mind when it comes to every principle in life. But I want to talk to people who are students. For some strange reason, for some strange reason. Tell anybody for some strange reason. I just believe that I'm too good to fail. Amen. See, if I mistakenly answer the wrong question, the teacher will mistakenly mark it right. That's my psychology. It's a programming. And so you will never see me after an exam. Eh? Stay now and say, hey, I missed that one. Hey, that one was wrong. Hey, I, 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 how many mistakes? Hey, I hope I will still pass. Nah. I we understand we have the stuff. Life is in our mouth. When we pass ourselves, we have passed. Amen. You must pass crook. Yeah. I might not know somebody. You must pass crook. Not because you read too much. Ah, yeah. But because you believe too much. Amen. You don't get it. I've seen people who read who failed. You're not, you're not getting me. I've seen people who read book. They read so much. And book read them too. <laughs> Amen. This is why you're not afraid. 
Some people fail just because of fear. Afraid of your lecturer. And so the answer you know normally now is not disappearing. So what happened? Teacher, even teacher is trying to calm you down. Calm down, calm down. Okay, teacher, I'm trying. Stop trying, amen. The king of kings lives inside of you. Amen. amen. So me, the greater, the greater one. He lives inside of me. He is headquartered in my spirit. So when we are going for exams, we don't go alone. Don't be selfish.